All right, guys. Seb here. Um, I'm just gonna show you today how I did this tutorial. Uh, how <laughs> Start again, Seb. I'm gonna show you how to do this today. Um, it's seen in my Life is 3D series, and a lot of you are asking, uh, how would you do this? Um, uh, how would you make it look like I actually was there, not just like sitting on top of an image? Uh, well, it's all done in Cinema 4D, so. Uh, we can get straight into it really. Uh, I just want to say, hope you all like the GFX pack. I know it wasn't the best GFX pack ever, but uh, I, it was kind of like a, just like a taster, see if you guys like that sort of stuff. Um, if you do, then that's great. Uh, I'll do more stuff like that, but if you don't, then obviously tell me where I went wrong. <laughs> anyway, so... Today we are gonna try and make this, or we'll recreate this. So, and the image is in the GFX pack. If you download the GFX pack, you will get this image. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Right, first you want to do is open that image. So I turn specular off first. Go to color, load image, sorted there. Sloped hill. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, just uh, then you've got to come to this little light thing. Uh, go to background, drag it onto the background. There it is. For the render settings, you want to if you just downscaled it to 1280 by 720, it wouldn't mean the dimensions off that photo. So what you need to do is actually change this output to 360, no, 3648. Um, by 2,736. Right, uh, everything else is fine for the moment. Right, so that's going to render it in the... Uh, is That's going to be exactly the same photo now as the original photo, if, if you get that. <laughs> Didn't explain that too well. Anyway, so first then you want to make the plane, which is what the shadows are going to be casted onto. Um, Easiest way to do this, I find, is once you've got it in the position, then you meddle around with it in this four-way window. But, uh, yeah, so what you kind of do is recreate the floor, tell Cinema 4D where the floor is, and on this occasion is a slope, so it might be a bit more difficult. Um, but not too difficult, don't fear. Slight increase on the slope. And then just maybe widen it a little bit more. Right. So that's all looking good. Um, what you may... Well, maybe just move that around a little bit. That's it. Right. Now, obviously, you need the text. So go MoGraph. Text object. Uh, type in whatever you want to type in. I think it's appropriate to type in slope, as it may be is a slope. Uh, uh, for this, I'm going to use a font called... Oh, so many fonts, so many fonts, so many fonts. Uh, a future auto lit light. I don't know, I think that's a future. Anyway, let's just use it. Let's not try and pronounce it. Um, let's just move it over there. And then you've got to kind of position it. I mean, this is going to be the easiest way to position this. If you make this fit in. Oh, I've got to take that. If you make this fit in here, and you can see that it's actually above. So if you've moved that on, and that's all covered by the plane, so obviously that doesn't look right there, so then you can just move it around on the y-axis, I think that is. I don't know much about maths, I will admit it. Uh, make it a bit deeper, obviously, and maybe just put it down like that, because it is a slope. Um, I think it'll be, put a capital P on this, yeah that's it, it'll sit above the floor so that when you actually put the uh, rigid body technique on there it doesn't shoot up and yeah it's really annoying. So at the moment literally what we've got is a plane, a background and text. It looks crap, right okay. So now what we're going to do, make the text look a whole lot nicer, put it down to 4mm the radius, crank up the steps to about 6, so you have some nice smooth edges. Uh, what you want to do is maybe horizontal space it, uh, and then the materials. Okay, so materials you want, say it's a nice orange in the background. Uh, let's recreate an orange. So kind of move it up here. 
Maybe that looks nice. Uh, reflection, obviously, for now. Uh, maybe the brunette brightness down. Mix strength 44 ish. Environment. Now, I use environment a lot because this kind of makes the, uh, the reflections like the picture, if you get me. So, load image and copy the same photo there. Um, uh, multiply, I kind of use add, but you need to bring it down a whole load more. So, it's kind of not very visible. Um, right, okay. So, maybe that down a bit more. Righty ho. Okay, that's going to be for that. Copy and paste that so you don't have to do it all again. Turn the environment off. Keep the reflection on and make the colour a lot lighter. So about there. And make the reflection quite a bit more. Okay. And then after that you want... Uh, yeah, okay, that's okay for the minute. So, right, put this onto your image. Oh, oh, oh image, put it onto your text object. And then you want to hit C1. Um, no, you don't want to hit C1. Wait a minute, that's cr oh, I'm talking shit. Uh, you want to put that on, you want to put that on R1, which is your paler one, which just goes on the caps. Um, and now you want to put this as if it was there, right okay so that looks crap at the moment, let's let's be honest, that looks awful um, so to sort that out, what we're going to do is render settings, render settings, render settings effect, ambient occlusion boost up to about 350 makes the shadows a lot more intense and yeah, you've obviously still got this black thing on the bottom here so to get rid of that, you need to Copy the background texture and put it onto the plane. Then the plane, you need to go to right click, Cinema 4D tags, compositing, compositing background, and that should get rid of the background. Of the plane, even. So it blends in. But it's still there, obviously. Um, so, so, what I usually do is I make it look like uh, it's rolling around, like it's rolling down the hit, well, trying to interact with the picture a lot more. So, to do this, you go text object. Click, right click on it, MoGraph text, rigid body um, and then put it on a plane as well and on the plane you want to make the bounce down a bit friction up quite a bit and then you just press play literally and then because it's a slope, let's say the E sloping away if that's even a word um, and that should look alright but uh, still not looking too great I must admit so uh, what we're going to do, um, for this I'm going to use the HDR Studio Rig from Grayscale Gorilla and I'm going to go into the Studio Control, you can use a Sky for this but I prefer using the Rig um, and you're going to put Scene by Camera off and load in the image just there um, and I load in the sloped hill image uh, yeah, cool 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 but then you need to go into Effect, Global Illumination Put it down to low for a minute because you don't want a hefty render. IR plus QMC still image. Plus, uh, move that up. And you want to put 2.2. If you've got 11.5, put 2.2 up um, so that it's the, re the so that the shadows look a bit more realistic. And okay, that should be looking a lot nicer. Just going to make it to build a scene here. Should at the moment look a lot nicer. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Got some reflections on the side, not on too many on the front, which looks better. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe we could in increase the brightness a little bit more, so it looks like it kind of blends in with the the light in the photo. That's a bit brighter, and that kind of looks not bad. Maybe finish off with some color correction, which I usually do on episodes. But if you like to see more of these Life is 3D images obviously leave a comment below and I'll read them all and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to create text in real life images using compositing uh, this has been Steam peace I'm out